All right. Now, let's get started. So, you've gotten a bit better at finding signatures. You're making your own, you're doing your own stuff. But, as you make your signatures, you want to make good signatures. You want to make ones that last because, let's say it's CSGO, pushes an update out every, oh, I don't know, a couple weeks. You want to make sure your signatures don't break. So, I'm going to show you how to make ones that are decently good. Now, the premise of this is to just pay attention to what you're make singing. You want to know, hey, this could probably change. I should probably avoid that. I should probably wildcard that. So, I picked out a function. This is CTF player. Drop room. I've already found it on Windows. So, of course, we are going to make sig this. It's my Python scripts. It's the same thing. It does the same stuff. And ta-da, we have a signature. It'll work. But we want to make sure that the signature will last. So for this, you need to kind of understand memory. Mostly the things that change are going to be class members, function offsets. That's usually the big ones. I mean, if the entire function prologue changes, I mean, you, there's nothing you can do to prevent against that. You're not going to want to make sig the entire function and then wildcard a bunch of stuff. That's ridiculous. It's not really going to help. Having super duper long signatures isn't really good because if something changes in those, oh, I don't know, 40, 50 bytes of a signature, then everything breaks and that's not good. But you don't want to make things that are too small because then something else could be similar. Let's say you have a signature that's eight bytes long. That's really short. And there could be a function that's added somewhere sooner in the binary that has that same eight byte sequence. And then you end up calling or hooking the wrong function and then your server crashes. And that's not good because then you won't be able to figure out what exactly is going on. So, the main thing you need to be worrying about is stuff that is liable to change. Makesig is pretty good. It already wildcard stuff that's going to change, like this. Anything in yellow, really, or whatever color it is on not dark theme. Stuff like this, this is going to get wildcard if these bytes are, because it's going to change, of course. New function gets added, everything gets off from that whack, and it changes. So, those are automatically wildcarded. Cool. So, we got our signature. It uh, goes down to here. It stops right here. So, I picked this function in particular because it broke on me before, and I'm like, hey, I should fix that. Because odds are it's going to break a lot in the future. Now, if you understand a bit about how classes work, basically, Imagine a gigantic stack of Legos. And you're just putting Legos on top of each other, right? Now a class is a stack of Legos, right? And each class member, like, oh, I don't know, M, I health, I max health, owner entity, stuff like that. Those are all class members. I'm sure you've used that prop syndrome, stuff like that. Those are all class members and they are a piece, they are a small Lego brick in your gigantic tower of Legos. And what you're looking at right here is the load effective address at ESI, which is this, this, the, this pointer, ESI plus this gigantic hex number, 19B0. I'm gonna pull it up in a calculator, because that's a huge number, if it'll open. Because my computer is a potato, all right. Programmer, hex, holy moly. <laughs> Programmer, hex, paste that in here. That's a huge number. This is a address 6,500 bytes from my this pointer. So that's approximately, it's a wild card, yes. It's, we'll say 1,500 number offsets down. It's probably not that much, but either way, it's a lot. Now in this gigantic stack of Legos where we go down 6,000 bytes, we want to get this address. Now, 
if something is added to this class or any higher class, this is a CTF player class. This, so let's say I don't know, C base player gets a new class member. That stack of Legos shifts everything. Let's say we're starting at the top of the stack of Legos. Yeah, the very top is zero. The next Lego is you know four bytes down, and so on and so forth. Let's say we add a Lego a thousand bricks down. That means everything below a thousand bricks gets shifted down. So instead of it being one nine B zero, it'll be one nine B four or eight or however many bytes or members are added above this member offset. So how do we avoid this scenario where if something is added, which happens pretty often, if it's something really, really far down, it'll break a lot because stuff gets added all the time, especially in big games. So how do we avoid the scenario where your signature breaks whenever an update gets pushed? Make SIG is good, I already mentioned this, Make SIG is pretty good at wildcard stuff, but it doesn't wildcard stuff like this, which is just member offsets. This is probably M shared, if I had to guess. But what you can do is grab the signature by yourself and then do it manually. Not completely manually, because you have the good gist of all the stuff up here, which is pretty good. I mean, if the this is all stack being pushed. If this breaks, then that means the whole function is different, basically. Like they add a new parameter or something, or move a parameter or something. And that'll break Linux too, if you have symbols. Anyways, you want to grab this manually. And, well, I already had this pulled up right here, my game data. So you want to find 19B0, and you want to wildcard it. That's your simplest option. So you go to your bytes on the left. You're looking for 19B0. There's B019, which is what you're looking for. This is called NDNS. Things are backwards. Basically, if you read backwards four bytes, it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 9, B0. Kind of strange to wrap your head around. That's called big Indian, if you really care what it's called. But basically, it's backwards. But yeah, this is 1, 9, B0. So. Like I said, you want to just wildcard it. These all four bytes. You don't want to skip the zeros because that's a part of the address. Basically, it's saying, hey, load the address of this plus uh, four bytes worth of an offset, which is this, one zero 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 one nine b 0 So we're going to wildcard that. It's the last four bytes. So we're going to go over here, wildcard. The magic wildcard character, or byte, is 2a, what source mod uses to wildcard stuff. So you change all this to 2A, and usually you're probably done, you're most likely done, but you want to make sure that there is another function that is doing the same thing, but I don't know, instead of at 19B0, it's 19B8, or something like that. Like the exact same prologue, same setup, only these four bytes are different. If that's the case, then you'll match more than one function, and that's not good, but I have a script to figure out for me, because it's a bit of a headache to figure out, because you have to search manually from IDA, and that's not fun. <clears throat> this is a, an IDA Pro thing, it's IDA Python. Basically, I put this in here, and it says, hey, it's a good string, this is a good signature, there's no other function that has this, only one, and it's this one. So there is another one, there's an IDC script somewhere on Allied Modders, I think either Void it or Peacemaker wrote it. If you can find it, good luck to you. It's somewhere on there, I know I've seen it. Basically it does the same thing, it checks to make sure a signature is a good signature. But let's say, for example, this didn't work. Let's say there's two of the same signature. So we have to just keep on going. We have to move on down to the next line and start adding bytes. So from here we go to the end and then we would append these. We have to wildcard the last four because that's a function. 
and that gets wild carded anyway. So it'd just be escape X, E8, and then 2A, 2A. A lot. Yeah, same thing. It, it A pin to your signature makes it slightly more unique. And if that doesn't work, just keep on going. And you'll also just get a hang of this. I mean, stuff like this, this is a comparison to negative one. I mean, odds are that's not gonna change. You're looking for a dereference of a member offset or a function offset. Things that is things that are liable to change. You wanna be looking for those and making sure, hey, it's probably something that's gonna change in the future or be different in the future. I should be aware of that. I should, oh, I don't know, wild card here and then I'll be safe from, from future updates that might break it. So once you do this more often, you'll get the hang of it and you'll figure out, hey, I should be paying attention to these strange member offsets. Maybe, you know, maybe I could help myself in the future because maybe it's a really crappy signature. Maybe, it'll t maybe it took you 20 minutes to find this one signature and then two months down the road, a game breaks the signature, you're going to do it all over again. That's not fun. So help yourself in the future, and your future self will thank you.